No, I did not do any of this. Did you or did you not conceal a murder for five weeks? No, I did not conceal a murder for five weeks. I was held captive by the man who committed the murder, and as soon as I was able to escape from him, I went directly to the authorities with the situation. If I was trying to conceal the murder, then after I left him, I would have kept running. I would not have gone to the police if I was trying to hide it. Once I was on my own, the first thing I did was get help. If I was trying to personally conceal this, then I would have continued running. I would have gone straight to my grandmother's and waited there for that man to show up and kill us. That's not what I did. I went to the police. I went to the police. I went to the police. I did. Not him. He went to my grandmother's to kill her. I was already with the police because I went to the police. I went to the police. That's what I did. I did not conceal her for five weeks. After I went to the police, it had been five weeks. I could not get away from him sooner than that. Five weeks was how long it took me to escape, to convince him that I wasn't going to leave, to give myself enough freedom to get away from him so that I could live. And then I went to the police. Which is what you're supposed to do. I went to the police. That is not concealing a crime. That is literally going to the police. Uh, you assisted the murder in disposing of the victim's possessions. <coughs> and buying the shovel. They constantly say this. I don't remember buying a shovel. I don't remember in getting rid of any of her belongings. I went black after I saw her body. <laughs> and I don't remember any of what they're saying now. But they say there's proof of it, but I have no memory of it. These are not things I did. These are things that he did that he forced me to participate in after he committed a murder. I was not a willing participant. He forced me. To do a lot of things. <laughs> Under threat of death. <laughs> and I knew he would kill me because he had literally just killed somebody else. A man who had quite literally just killed somebody else. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? I was supposed to do exactly what he told me to do. It was not a situation where I could just leave. Or refuse. He had just murdered somebody. You don't just walk away from that. The murderer will not let you just walk out the front door and tell people. I was not allowed to tell anybody. He took my cell phone. He took my computer away. The, way, the day I went to the police, I had only gotten that laptop back a couple of days before because he took it someplace. And I don't know where he took it. After she'd lain on the porch in several gates while well, you lived in the house. Yes. After he murdered her. After Kenneth McBride strangled Roberta Laws. He put her in garbage bags and he put her on the porch while he dug the hole. And then he didn't bury her immediately. Because he said it would arouse suspicion for the neighbors. He dug the hole one night and then he waited a day or two before he put her in it. So that the neighbors wouldn't see him doing all of this in the same span of hours. It was not a choice that I made. I was in the house tied to a bed railing. I could not leave. I was tied up and barely cognizant of what was happening at the time. During this time, he would come in and rape me. 
and then go out to the porch and check and see if she was alive. He thought she was still alive for a while. <laughs> None of you know what it was. You want to say that you do. You want to tell other people what happened, but you were not there. <laughs> I didn't do what they accused me of doing. I did what I had to do to survive. But that wasn't by choice, the way that they say it is. <laughs> None of them know what it would be like to be in the situation that I was forced into by this man who lied to me about everything. He moved me into that house with her in a hotel room to convince me that she didn't exist. That was how far he went. He was dating her for 10 years and then he went on Craigslist and created a new name and a new age and a new everything and to bring women in. Said he was single. Carried on the relationship for months, convincing me he was single. He had planned this the whole time. He proved to me that nobody else lived in the house by putting her in a hotel for a whole week while he had me live at the house to prove to me that it was his home. Why would he have done that if he wasn't planning what he was planning? He was trying to get me into the home where he could control me and then he was going to get rid of her. He had planned it long before meeting me. He planned it before even speaking to me. He was looking for somebody online to replace her with. Somebody who was mentally not strong enough to overpower him. Somebody who wouldn't, wouldn't get smart, wouldn't wise up to him. He lied to me about everything, including his name. I couldn't look him up to know that he was already a sex predator. He had already done things like this. He was already known for hurting the weakest in society. Just like the people that are hurting me now, they're known for going after the weakest in society. What I did in those five weeks... I did to keep myself alive. If you want to judge me, you should really have to experience something like this yourself to understand what it is you're judging. Because you are not seeing the full situation from your couch in your living room where you're sitting and laughing at me and mocking me and calling me a bad person for surviving a situation that you don't know. Why hasn't he appealed yet? If he thinks he's innocent and there's all of this evidence and he has all of this support on the outside now, he has had support from y'all for about two years. You've been sending him letters, trying to correspond with him. Why is he still sitting there not saying anything? If what you're saying is true and I'm the real murderer, why is a man sitting in prison not trying to fight the charges? <laughs> You've not shown a single document that said that I did these things. <laughs> Without him forcing me to do them to live. You've not shown a single document that shows where I was arrested. Where I went to jail for this crime. Where the police ever thought I did it. Oh, but the... His defense attorney said... Yeah, his defense attorney can pull anything out of their ass to try to get him away. Daryl Brooks played his own defense attorney. Does that mean that he didn't do any of the things that he did? If you're, oh, you're, you're listening to a defense attorney and saying, well, everything this man says is true, does that mean that everything Daryl Brooks said on that stand was true because he was acting in defense of himself? And defense attorneys can say the most bullshit things. They can flat out lie about the victims and slander and defame the victim. 
that, that that's they're allowed to do that. And all of your evidence that I deserve punishment has come from the defense attorney who is allowed to slander and defame anyone to get his his client off the hook for the crime that they committed. The reason these people are doing this is because they want me dead. When I say that this is harassment that is meant to kill, this is what I meant because they will accuse you of the most heinous crimes and insist that they know. They'll insist they have all of the evidence that you committed these heinous crimes when in reality they're twisting everything to make you look like a demon when the circumstances weren't such. I didn't do the things that they accused me of doing. I would never have. <laughs>